this is Custom Keys, and in this video, I will be reviewing the Razer Huntsman Quartz Edition. Now, before I start, I just wanted to mention that the phrase gaming, when referring to keyboards or other tech, just means that it's a high performance item, as gaming is a fairly demanding hobby for a computer. So even if you're not a gamer, you would just be purchasing a high performance device. With that out of the way, let's start the unboxing. The first thing you see when you open it up, aside from the keyboard of course, is the For Gamers by Gamers slogan brought to you by Razer. Underneath we have the rest of the cable. This is a cable only keyboard, it uh, doesn't have a Bluetooth option, which makes sense because in order for it to be high performing, there are just a lot more benefits to using a cable than Bluetooth. The cable itself is beautifully braided and you connect it to your computer via USB. Some other things that come in the box would be this congratulatory note given to you by Razer, as well as a user manual, and these really cool reflective stickers of the snake logo. The keyboard itself comes in at 18 inches wide by 6 inches deep. It weighs one pound, 15.2 ounces. So it's not too heavy, making it fairly portable despite its large size. Personally, I think this keyboard is absolutely gorgeous. Now, I'm not really a pink person myself, but I love the way Razer managed to get a very vibrant yet muted color out of this board. Very impressive and very beautiful. it when keyboards put their brand on the actual board, but in this case, I think it's very tastefully done, and I think it's a very elegant logo, so I don't mind it at all. So the first thing you see when you plug in the board is that it lights up with color, but it's nothing too crazy and the RGB isn't customized at all yet, and the way you can customize it is by going to Razer's website. Once you get to Razer's website, you download something called Razer Synapse 3, and from there you can do a lot of cool things like customizing the keys, and more importantly, customizing the RGB to suit your needs and your tastes. The bottom of the keyboard features these gray rubber pads to keep the keyboard from moving around too much as you game or type, since it is a fairly light keyboard. There's also the option to raise the keyboard to two different levels, depending on what you prefer. The bottom also has more of a grainy, sort of matte finish compared to the smooth top plate, so I included this sound test to allow you guys to sort of hear what I'm talking about. Now for the keycaps. Despite the fact that they're made of double shot ABS rather than PBT, I actually don't mind them too much because they do get the job done in terms of color and they sort of complete the look of the keyboard in my opinion. So far I haven't experienced any greasiness or slipperiness as I type, so they are fairly high quality in that regard and the shine through in my opinion is great. Typical of most gaming keyboards, the Huntsman features a floating keycap design, meaning that the switches are exposed as you can see here. The benefit of that would be that it makes for a lighter board, but personally I prefer the high profile look as dust doesn't collect so easily. And now for the switches. 
What sets the Huntsman apart from a lot of keyboards is that it uses Razer's optical mechanical gaming switches, rather than a traditional mechanical switch. Each switch comes with its own stabilizer for a more consistent experience when typing or gaming, and I really appreciate how Razer incorporated a gray accent piece for each switch to complement the pink board. This illustration I found on Razer's website helps show the mechanics of the switch, but basically what happens is as the light beam hits the stem when you press down, the switch actuates. And since nothing is faster than the speed of light, it is indeed faster than regular mechanical switches, though I personally can't tell the difference. Despite being clicky stock switches, I think that they're fairly smooth, and I included a sound test for you guys to hear the switch by itself as well as the switch with a keycap. So yeah, the keycaps do add quite a bit of noise, but the switch itself isn't too quiet either as it's clicky. Personally, I don't mind the noise too much, but if you don't like it, I would suggest purchasing some PBT keycaps by Razer. I'm sure that'll contribute to more of a thawky sound. These stabilizers were actually quite nice. This is a little close-up of the stabilizer, and the way it connects to the spacebar is that the spacebar clips onto it. At this point, I was hoping to get a closer look at the stabilizers, so I decided to unscrew the top plate and see if I could open it up and take a look at the PCB and the stabilizers. Unfortunately, after I finally finished unscrewing and fiddling around with it a little bit, I realized that there's some sort of adhesive on the top right and left corners of the top plate, which prevented me from opening it up. And I was not trying to void the warranty in any way, so I stopped right away and unfortunately I couldn't get it open. So at this point, I decided to just screw it back together and move on with the video.
And that should do it. The switches are fairly light to the touch, so if you're using this keyboard for typing or programming, then I would definitely go with something that has heavier switches. But again, it all depends on what you prefer. The Quartz Edition of the Huntsman is simply gorgeous, but in terms of functionality, I think there are cheaper options that you can go for that get the same job done. If you're buying this for the customization aspect of things, and price isn't a huge concern, then I would just go with a custom build where you can truly fine-tune things for your specific needs. However, if you want quality, are looking for high performance, and are on somewhat of a budget, because this is still fairly expensive, then I would just go for the Razer Huntsman. It could be worth it for you.